Hello everyone, it's Seven here, back with the first helpful My City Monsters video since the currency grinding series. I did say I would keep making helpful videos on My City Monsters, and I meant it. This video, instead of learning currencies, we're gonna learn about wobblins. How do you get them or the island? How do you wake them up? What should you use them for, and what's the most efficient way to use them? We'll cover all of those topics and more in this long-awaited video. First things first, how do you get the island? You automatically unlock the island at level 13, where you don't need to spend anything to unlock it. If you happen to be under 13 and need some quick experience to reach this island, I would recommend watching my video on grinding experience. Now assuming you're over level 13, you should probably already have the island unlocked. But you'll notice this island doesn't have any structures whatsoever. What's that about? Well, the way this island works is you can go to the market and buy wobblin statues for a couple of tens of thousands of coins, which is barely anything if you're even remotely deep into the game. When you buy a wobblin statue, you place it on the island, and it doesn't sing or anything. So what do you do? Well, wobblins are a special kind of monster. You need to wake every wobblin up from their statue form to their normal monster form. If you click on a wobblin, you'll see it has a button titled Inventory. If you press that button, you'll see a bunch of monster eggs with these little status numbers under them. What this little menu is for is to track your progress on waking up the wobblin. You see, the way you wake up the wobblin is by zapping all of the eggs listed in the inventory into the wobblin. You have to zap whatever number of eggs it tells you into the wobblin, but you only have a limited time to do it. Every wobblin is different though. Some wobblins are harder to wake up, while some are easier. Some of the easiest wobblins to wake up barely have any eggs you need to zap into them, but have a very short amount of time to get them when compared to others. The harder wobblins, on the other hand, have many more eggs you need to zap into them, with a much longer time limit on them to compensate for how many eggs you'll need to get. We'll use the brump as an example here. The brump is one of the easiest to activate, where you have two days to activate it but you only need to zap 6 fur corns and 2 fogs into it. But how do you zap the eggs into it? What does that even mean? You first need to breed whatever monsters it tells you to. For the brump, you need to breed, not buy, 6 fur corns and 2 fogs. When you get the monster bred, do not send it to the nursery. Instead, press the zap button in the very middle here for a menu to pop up. This menu will show all of the wobblins that require the egg, and every wobblin will have two buttons under them. Inventory, and Zap to Wobblin. The inventory, of course, opens the inventory of the wobblin for you to check your progress on the wobblin. The Zap to Wobblin button, however, zaps the egg into the wobblin, and the egg gets stored in the wobblin's inventory. If it's the first egg for the wobblin, the time limit will start. So for the Brump, once you zap your very first egg into it, a two-day timer will start for you to get all of the eggs in there within the time limit. But what if you fail? What if you don't get all the eggs in there in time? If you run out of time and don't get every egg in there, you have two choices. Choice one is to give up and start again, where you don't lose the Wobblin statue, but all the eggs inside it are lost. You will get your money back for the eggs though, so it'd be just like selling the monster if the eggs do so happen to spoil. Choice 2, however, gives you something of a second chance. For choice 2, you can fill up the rest of this wobblin instantly to wake it up, but you will have to pay diamonds to account for the rest of the missing eggs. You have the option to fill up the rest of the wobblin any time though, whether it's before you get any eggs in there at all, or if it hasn't expired yet. It's always an option. And now I'll show off how to get every monster using strategy charts you can find on the fandom page. For example, the Brump can be obtained very easily. As I said before, you need 6 fur corns and 2 fogs to get it. If you have plant in cold island, you can get it in 2 days using this method shown on this chart here. You can get it in 1 day if you have every island up to earth island unlocked though through this method. For the zinth, you need to breed a T-Rox, a Drumpler, an Octopus, a Kongol, a Maw, and a Pango in 2 days. If you have plant in cold island, you can use the method shown here to wake it up in a day, or you can get it even faster and easier by using the method shown here if you have every island up to fire oasis. The Zenth is without a doubt the easiest monster to wake up. The Zucker is a little harder on the other hand, where you need to breed 2 Int Brats, 2 Deejas, 4 Bogarts, 6 T-Roxes, 6 Octopuses, 6 Furcorns, and 4 Fwogs in 10 days. You actually only need plant in cold island to get it using this strategy, 
But if you have Air Island, you can get it using this strategy. And you can use this much, much faster strategy if you have Water and Earth Island unlocked. The Blip Squeak has a nice change of pace, though, where it only needs four Toe Jammers, four Deejas, four Pom Poms, six Cybops, and six T Roxes in five days. If you have the plant cold in Air Islands, you can get it using this strategy. Or you could get it using this strategy if you have Water Island locked as well. For the tryhards, though, you can get it by only pre-breeding with this strategy if you have Earth Island, Firehaven, and all the Mirror Islands up to Water Island, and then bonus breeding structures on all of them. The Bon Appetit takes quite a bit more work, though, where you have 10 days to breed 5 Rifts, 5 Ent Brats, 6 Bogarts, 6 Pom Poms, 6 T Roxes, 10 Drumplers, 10 Fwogs, 10 Maws, and 10 Mammoths. If you have the Plant Cold and Air Islands unlocked, you can use this strategy to get it in 10 days. Though you can cut it down to 7 days if you have the Water and Earth Islands, and use this strategy. However, if you're a tryhard, and have every island and mirror island in the game unlocked, with bonus breeding structures on all of them, you can pre-breed and breed for one more day to get it the quickest by using this strategy. The poke, again, is a little easier though, where you need to get a Shelby, a Reedling, a Pom Pom, a Scups, two Clambos, a Pango, an Octopus, a Shrub, and two Danny Doos in five days. You can use this strategy to get it in two days if you have every island up to Water Island unlocked, and you can use this strategy to get it in one day if you also have Earth Island and Fire Haven. The Screamu is just as easy too, where you must get two shell beats, six sponges, six shrubs, and six quibbles in five days. If you have all islands up to Water Island unlocked, you can get it in three days using this strategy, or get it a little easier using this strategy as long as you have Earth Island and Fire Oasis unlocked too. The Tempa is quite a bit harder though, where you have a whopping 14 days to get 8 Shell Beats, 12 T Roxes, 12 Pummels, 12 Clambos, and 24 Drumplers. The optimal way to get this done is to use the strategy shown on screen here if you have every island up to Earth Island unlocked. Though you can't get it any faster if you don't have bonus breeding structures due to how many Shell Beats you need. The Creeper School, on the other hand, which is a fundamental part of the song, only gives 7 days to activate where you need 12 Noggins, 5 Deejas, 5 Shell Beats, 6 Pummels, 10 Quibbles, 8 Congles, and 6 t Roxes. If you have every island up to Water Island, you can get it in 6 days by using this strategy, or you could get it in 5 days by using this strategy as long as you have Fire Oasis too. The Waja is just barely harder though, giving you 10 days to grab yourself 6 Tweedles, 7 Deejas, 10 Dandidoos, 10 Cybops, and 10 Reeglings. If you have the islands up to Water Island, you can wake it up in 8 days using this strategy, or you can get it in 7 days by using this strategy, assuming you have Earth Island too. For the tryhards though, you can pre-breed and spend 1 extra day to get it the quickest by using this strategy. Of course, assuming you have every island, every mirror island up to Water Island, and then bonus breeding structures on all of them. The Astropod gives 10 days where you need to get 5 Deejas, 8 Scups, 5 Shell Beats, 10 Toe Jammers, 8 Reedlings, and 6 Sponges before you run out of time. If you have every island up to Water Island, you can use this strategy to wake it up in 9 days, or you could cut it down to 7 days by using this strategy, assuming you have Earth Island 2. If you have every single island, mirror island, and have bonus breeding structures on all of those islands, though, you can be a tryhard and get it by pre-breeding and doing an extra day to get it the fastest by using this strategy. Pixelotl is even harder, though, where it gives you 14 days to get 6 Ent Brats, 6 Rifts, 10 Scups, 8 Pummels, 8 T Roxes, 14 Cybops, and 10 Fwogs. You can get it in 11 days by using this strategy if you have every island up to Water Island, Or you can get it in 9 if you have Earth Island. If you also happen to have Bone Island, you can completely ignore the Fwogs you need to get on the other islands, and get them all on Bone Island instead. The Swag slows it down a bit with a 7 day limit though, where you need to get an Entbrat, a Deej, a Riff, a Shelby, a Chorusur, 4 Bogarts, 4 Pompoms, 4 Sponges, 4 Furcorns, and 4 Quibbles. 
If you have all islands up to Earth Island unlocked, you can use this strategy to get it in three days, which is a great strategy. For the big tryhards out there though, assuming you have all of the normal and mirror islands and bonus breeding structures on all of them, you can get it entirely by pre-breeding all the eggs by using this strategy right here. The Dwumral is much harder to get though, where you need to get 3 Int Brats, 3 Deejas, 3 Rifts, 3 Shelbys, 3 Choristers, 4 Bogarts, 4 Kongols, 4 Pompoms, 4 Pummels, 4 Reedlings, 2 Scups, 2 Thumpies, 8 Noggins, 8 Toe Jammers, 8 Mammoths, 4 Potbellies, and 4 Tweagles in 14 days. It really sounds like a lot, but if you have every island up to Earth Island, you can get it in just 6 days by using this strategy. You can shave off a day though by using this strategy here, as long as you also have Fire Haven and Fire Oasis. The Scargo is quite a nice change of pace though, where it only takes you 3 days, 3 shell beats, 3 clambles, 2 pummels, 2 sponges, 3 shrubs, and 3 dandy dudes to wake up. If you have every island up to Earth Island, you can get it in 3 days by using this strategy. Using this strategy though, you can try hard with all the islands, mirror islands, and bonus breeding structures to pre-breed it all in one day. The Fleet Swarm is just barely harder, but so much easier than most others we talked about earlier, where you have 5 days to get 4 dandy dudes, 3 sponges, 4 pummels, 3 shell beats, 4 fur corns, 3 choristers, and 3 weaklings. You can get it in 4 days assuming you have all islands up to Earth Island, and you use this strategy. You could shave off an extra day if you wanted though by using this strategy as long as you have Fire Haven on top of that. The mulch can be woken up by getting 6 sponges, 6 pummels, 6 noggins, 4 int brats, 4 choristers, 4 clambles, and 8 fur corns within the span of 7 days. Using this strategy, you can get it in 5 days if you have every island up to Earth Island, or you could try hard and get it by pre-breeding the eggs and breeding for an extra day assuming you have every island mirror island bonus breeding structure by using this strategy. The Dermot is pretty easy, giving you 3 days to get 3 Ent Brats, 3 Choristers, 4 Scups, 4 Thumpies, and 12 Fwogs. If you have all islands up to Earth Island, you can use this strategy to get it in 3 days, though you could make it easier on yourself by using this strategy if you have Bone Island. If you also happen to have the Mirror Plant, Cold, and Earth Islands, and you have yourself a ton of bonus breeding structures, you could use this strategy to become a true tryhard. The Giger is just barely harder to activate, giving you 7 days to get 6 Rifts, 4 Scups, 4 Pompoms, 6 Cybops, and 6 Reedlings. As long as you have all the islands up to Earth Island, you can use this strategy to get it, though you can also breed Reedlings and Cybops on Firehaven if you have it to make it easier on yourself. Finally, you can wake up the Monculus by getting an Entbrat, a Deej, a Riff, a Chorister, a Shelby, a Reedling, a Pompom, a Thumpy's Egg, a Clamble, and a T-Rock within the span of 10 days. The ideal strategy would be this, where you of course need every island up to Earth Island, and you can get it done in just 2 days. So we've talked about all the wobblins and how to get them, but there's something else you may notice after you wake them up. For a select amount of wobblins, 16 to be exact so far, you can find a button titled Unlock. It's only found on wobblins that are awake, and this button will cost you some keys to press. But when the button is pressed, it will activate a brand new inventory, this time for rare eggs instead. You need to zap all of these rare eggs into the wobblin just as you did when you first woke it up, and then you can wake it up a second time, this time as a rare wobblin. And by the way, if you needed some keys to do this, I would highly recommend checking out my video on grinding keys, which I'll link right up here. So the way rare wobblins work is you of course zap the eggs required into it, but this time you have absolutely no time limit. Instead, after you zap your first rare egg into the wobblin, it goes into hibernation and sleeps until you get the rest of the eggs zapped into it. I'll go through all of the rare eggs you need for the rare weapons in a moment, but I do want to leave you with a little disclaimer first, and that is I unfortunately can't really give any charts or explain any strategies to get rare weapons the fastest, because the monsters required are rare monsters, which are only available during select times of the year, almost like seasonals. The Brump requires 3 rare furcorns and 1 rare fwog to evolve, and it costs you 2 keys to unlock. The Zinth, though, takes 1 rare Kongol, 1 rare T-Rocks, 1 rare Octopus, 1 rare Pango, 1 rare Maw, and 1 rare Drumpler to evolve, and it takes 3 keys to unlock. 
The poke takes one rare Shelby, one rare Reedling, one rare Pom Pom, one rare Scups, one rare Clamble, one rare Pango, one rare Octopus, one rare Shrub, and one rare Dandy Doo to evolve, and takes five keys to unlock. The Thwok takes one rare Int Brat, one rare Deez, one rare Riff, one rare Shelby, one rare Quarister, two rare Bogarts, two rare Pom Poms, two rare Sponges, two rare Furcorns, and two rare Wibbles to evolve by requiring seven keys to unlock. The Drumroll needs one rare Ant Brat, one rare Deej, one rare Riff, one rare Shellbeat, one rare Quarter two rare Bogarts, two rare Congles, two rare Pom Poms, two rare Pummels, two rare Reedlings, one rare Scup's Egg, one rare Thumpy's Egg, three rare Noggins, three rare Toe Jammers, three rare Mammoths, two rare Pot Bellies, and two rare Tweedles to evolve, while needing a whopping 14 keys to unlock. The Screamoo needs one rare Shelby, three rare Sponges, three rare Shrubs, and three rare Quibbles to evolve, while requiring five keys to unlock. The Tempa asks of you three rare Shelbys, four rare T-Roxes, four rare Pummels, four rare Clambles, and eight rare Drumplers to evolve, while also needing a whopping 14 keys to unlock. The Dermot needs one rare Ent Brat, one rare Quarisur, two rare Scups, two rare Thumpies, and four rare Frogs to evolve, while requiring three keys to unlock. The Giger must get three rare Rifts, three rare Reedlings, two rare Scups, two rare Pom Poms, and three rare Cybops to evolve, while requiring seven keys from you to unlock it. The Wajay needs three rare Tweedles, three rare Deejas, four rare Dandyus, four rare Cybops, and four rare Reedlings to evolve, while needing ten keys to unlock. The Creepuscule needs two rare Deejas, two rare Shellbeats, three rare T-Roxes, three rare Pummels, three rare Congles, two rare Quibbles, and four rare Noggins to evolve, while requiring seven keys to unlock. The Blipsqueak will require two rare Deejas, two rare Pom Poms, three rare T-Roxes, three rare Cybops, and two rare Toe Jammers to evolve, while it'll cost you five keys to unlock. The Scargo takes one rare Shellbeat, one rare Clamble, one rare Pummel, one rare Sponge, one rare Shrub, and one rare Dandy Doo to evolve, while requiring three keys of you to unlock. The Astropod needs two rare Shellbeats, two rare Deejas, three rare Reedlings, three rare Scups, three rare Sponges, and four rare Toe Jammers to evolve, while costing you ten keys to unlock. The Bon Appetit will require two rare Rifts, two rare Ent Brats, three rare Pom Poms, three rare Bogarts, three rare T Roxes, four rare Frogs, four rare Drumplers, four rare Mob, and four rare Mammoths to evolve, and it'll cost you ten keys to unlock. The Fleet Worm will need a one rare Shellbeat, one rare Quarisera, one rare Reedling, one rare Sponge, two rare Pummels, two rare Dandy Doos, and two rare Furcorns to evolve, and you need five keys to unlock it. Finally, the Monculus can also be evolved into a rare variant by zapping a rare Quarister, a rare Shelby, a rare Riff, a rare Deej, a rare Entbrat, a rare Reedling, a rare Pom Pom, a rare Thumpy's Egg, a rare Clamble, and a rare T-Rox into it, and you can unlock the monster for 12 keys. Now, with all of the other common and rare Wublins out of the way, the final monster we'll be talking about getting is the Wubox, which is by far the hardest to get. To get the Wubox powered up, you need one of every single type of Wubblin to box into it. You'll need to do a lot of grinding to get this monster, which makes it a huge achievement if you do manage to get it. Using the methods and strategies we talked about earlier though, you can get it through hard work and dedication. But why do you want Wubblin so bad other than for the song? Well, Wubblins are a pretty versatile monster where they can produce a lot of currencies. The currencies they produce are coins, diamonds, treats, and shards. They definitely tend to produce diamonds the least, but it's always great when they do. The main reason for farming Wubblins is really for diamonds. So how do you farm Wubblins quickly and efficiently? Well, the best Wubblin to farm is the Zinth by far. Like I said earlier, it's absolutely the easiest Wubblin to wake up, and it only takes up a 2x2 two two space. For this island, maximizing grid spaces is the very best way to make farms, because Wubblins don't take up any beds whatsoever. If you focus on making a whole farm of Zenths, you can guarantee yourself a ton of goodies, and quite a bit of diamonds from the island too. It is also worth noting that rare Wubblins give more rewards than the common Wubblins, 
So if you want some extra rewards, you should try to evolve as many of your Zents and Common Wobblins to Rare Wobblins as you can, especially if you're farming. One other thing about Wobblins is that instead of having likes like other monsters where you can make them happy, they instead have polarity. How polarity works is there are monsters that positively affect each other's coin rates and monsters that negatively affect each other's coin rates. It goes like this. The Brump positively affects the Poke and negatively affects the Astropod and it is positively affected by the Fleech Worm and negatively affected by the Blipsqueak. The Zenth positively affects the Dermot and negatively affects the Waje, and it is positively affected by the Giger and negatively affected by the Astropod. The Poke positively affects the Tempa and negatively affects the Mulch, and it is positively affected by the Brump and negatively affected by the Bon Appetit. The Swak positively affects the Mulch and negatively affects the Tempa, and it is positively affected by the Dermot and negatively affected by the Zuker. The Dwumral positively affects the Waje and negatively affects the Fleech Worm, and it is positively affected by the Astropod and negatively affected by the Fleech Worm. The Zooker positively affects the Bon Appetit and negatively affects the Thwok, and it is positively affected by the Mulch and negatively affected by the Screamoo. The Screamoo positively affects the Blipsqueak and negatively affects the Zooker, and it is positively affected by the Creepy Skewel and negatively affected by the Pixelotl. The Tempa positively affects the Giger and negatively affects the Blipsqueak, and it is positively affected by the Poke, and negatively affected by the Thwok. The Dermot positively affects the Thwok, and negatively affects the Giger, and it is positively affected by the Zenth, and negatively affected by the Scargo. The Giger positively affects the Zenth, and negatively affects the Creepuscule, and it is positively affected by the Tempa, and negatively affected by the Dermot. The Waje positively affects the Creepuscule, and negatively affects the Pixelotl, and it is positively affected by the Dwumral, and negatively affected by the Zenth. The Creepuscule positively affects the Screamoo, and negatively affects the Bon Appetit, and it is positively affected by the Waje, and negatively affected by the Giger. The Blipsqueak positively affects the Scargo, and negatively affects the Brump, and it is positively affected by the Screamoo, and negatively affected by the Tempa. The Scargo positively affects the Pixelotl, and negatively affects the Dermant, and it is positively affected by the Blipsqueak and negatively affected by the Mulch. The Astropod positively affects the Dwumral and negatively affects the Zenth, and it is positively affected by the Bon Appetit and negatively affected by the Brump. The Pixelotl positively affects the Fleech Worm and negatively affects the Screamew, and it is positively affected by the Scargo and negatively affected by the Waje. The Bon Appetit positively affects the Astropod and negatively affects the Poke, and it is positively affected by the Zooker and negatively affected by the Creepuscule. The Mulch positively affects the Zooker and negatively affects the Scargo, and it is positively affected by the Thwok and negatively affected by the Poke. The Fleech Worm positively affects the Brump and negatively affects the Dwumral, and it is positively affected by the Pixelotl and negatively affected by the Dwumral. The Monculus and Wobox don't have any polarity to them though, and the rare Wobblins have the exact same polarity stats as the commons do, but they like other rares instead. For example, like we just talked about, the Brump positively affects the Poke and negatively affects the Astropod, and it is positively affected by the Fleech Worm and negatively affected by the Blipsqueak, which means that the rare Brump positively affects the rare Poke and negatively affects the rare Astropod, and it is positively affected by the rare Fleech Worm and negatively affected by the rare Blipsqueak. That's really about all you need to know about Wobblins, though. I really, really hope this video helped, as this is without a doubt my biggest My Singing Monsters related video yet. So to know that I helped you would be amazing. If I did help you, please do leave a like on the video, so I can reach more people and help them too. You can also feel free to leave a comment telling me what you thought of the video. I read every comment, and it always makes my day to read you guys' comments. If you want to see more helpful videos like this, stick around and subscribe! I would absolutely love to have you as a part of the channel, and you're always welcome here. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope I'll be seeing you in the next video. For now though, goodbye!